Bring Sarah Kustak back in. And Sarah, 38 times this season, the Nets had 15 or more turnovers. 24, including tonight, 24 of those games have been home. I know Kyrie Irving didn't play in a lot of those games, but what did you see with that tonight? Well, I think, you know, Steve, one of the things he brought up was the unforced turnovers. And we deservedly so have raved about this Boston defense, the game plan coming in, not only the scheme they play with, but the personnel that they have to work with. However, 37 points off turnovers, 21 turnovers. Um, there were so many instances where it felt like there was just a carelessness or a lack of attention to detail or a focus or just not understanding that this is exactly what you've seen out of Boston shooting the gaps, getting in passing lanes, in denials, um, not the Christmas and the passes. And some of that too comes from the movement, the lack of cutting and just the stationary action or the stagnancy of this offense that created some of that. It, and Boston has a very good offense, but they're also at their best similar, similarly to the Nets when they're on the run, when they get some of those early looks and they get it going in transition. And not only does that put a ton of pressure on your defense, but it's eliminating some of those looks you can get offensively. And so I think that's one point that you continue to look at. We've seen that through the course of the series. But, Chris, overall, too, it, it sometimes it sucks some of the wind out of what you're trying to do offensively because the Nets had to work so hard for the majority of all their looks, all their shots, on top of the fact that you see a jam at the other end, catch some momentum, and any time it felt like the Nets were starting to get back in this one, Boston would make a play they'd come away whether it was a shot on the other end or a steal or a defensive uh, possession that it really allowed them to continue to have breathing room throughout the course of this and it was impressive it was impressive watching yeah, that not composure. just tonight here in game three Sarah but for the entire series the Nets have had to work for everything they've gotten and you know it, it's not a news flash since the beginning of the the new year the Celtics have been the best defense in the NBA so going towards a game four now do or die for Brooklyn Sarah potentially getting Ben Simmons back in the fold. How do you see this playing out? Well, I, I think for Brooklyn, it starts with the fact you focus on one game. I'm curious to see uh, the anticipation is that one Ben will be back. However, I do think you temper that in the concept of it may be 10 minutes, maybe a couple minutes stretch here, a couple minutes stretch here. Um, so you can't expect that he's going to come back and be a savior for you. However, I think there is hope that what he brings with his size, his length, potentially what he can do on the defensive end, pushing the pace, a ball handler, his ability to pass, to rebound, those type of things may factor in. I'm also curious to see, does Blake Griffin, did he earn himself a position now back in the rotation in the lineup? Does that change uh, what it looks like in terms of the bigs? And overall for Brooklyn too, you know, I said this quite a bit throughout the broadcast, I would love to see more actions and more movement happening around Kevin Durant or to Kevin Durant to free him up. We continue to see where he was getting the ball. Some of it was dribble handoffs, but it was, some of it was just putting him at the elbow and allowing him to work in single coverage. But it was not single coverage because he always had a second coming. The Boston Celtics do a great job of building a wall where their help was coming from, how they were shading. And so can you run some pin downs? Can you run some stagger screens? Can you do some things that allow the movement where Kevin Durant's catching it, that it gives him some room to get a shot off? Because with his size, with his movements, um, so much of that allows him then to, to really continue to read and pick apart a defense or potentially get to the basket. We didn't see Brooklyn get to the basket a lot. It was a little bit better in that first half. But to me, sometimes you look at that, does that factor into not just the Celtics defense, but the fatigue factor? Steve Nash pointed to Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant with that. It, and frankly, you watch them in 46 minutes for Kevin Durant. That is a lot of stress and a lot of wear and a lot to put on an individual who's getting banged and hit and uh, bodied up on every single turn with multiple fresh defenders for Sarah, the tremendous job as always. We appreciate the time. We'll see you for game four on Monday back here at Barclays Center.